Hey guys, Cliff here. This video is about four different things. Um, the first thing being, I've seen a lot of comments in my own videos about warranties and then on Reddit, on Discords, and that oftentimes paints a, a fairly bad picture uh, of these Chinese-based companies, you know, mini PCs and all sorts of different consumer electronics. I just want people to know that, and, and for the record, I'm talking as a perspective from an end user, not someone making content. You know, for example, with the GPD Win 2, so we're talking way back when dealing with GPD, the experience was the exact same as what I had with my Win Max 2, which we'll get to in a second. And as far as I know, for all the different companies, INEO, um, you know, 1X Player, I've dealt with 1X Player, it was a little different, but ultimately the options were the same. There's really just one company that comes to mind uh, that I've had terrible service and it's not a company that does mini pcs and i'm you know it's not the video to add them so i'm not gonna dwell on that but you got to keep in mind that there's always two sides to a coin and i'm not saying that any of these stories are not true i'm sure there are that have a lot of backing to prove that it was really a terrible experience but for the most part you'll be offered one of two options getting the piece to service the device yourself if you're comfortable doing that or you're going to have the option to send it to the company and you have to pay for shipping. That's usually where there's an issue for someone like me in Canada. I don't know how much it is in the States, but I'm in Canada. Shipping to China is super expensive. If you can service these devices yourself, you're better off doing that. So that was number one. Number two, I'm super excited. I'm launching an aquaclev.com website right now. There's nothing you should find either nothing or a coming soon page just to let you guys know to keep your eyes peeled. Whatever you'll see in terms of video, eventually there will be a readable format for people who prefer that kind of approach. Of course, I'm a one band man. Everything you see on this channel, I do by myself. It takes me learning how to do a website. I'm hoping to launch it by the end of January or early February. But, but yeah, I, I wanted to mention it. Keep your eyes peeled as it will be coming shortly. There's two things we're going to be doing in this video. Number one is I have one of the super early bird uh, GPD Win Max 2. And and it comes with a 128 gigabyte uh, drive in it, which is super small. When I was doing those showcase videos, I always had an issue with space. So I had this one terabyte lying around, nothing special. You know, it's a Sabrent uh, NVMe drive. So I'm just gonna install this one. And uh, yeah, that's gonna be better than the 128 that we have here. And the other thing is, and maybe some of you have noticed on my GPD Win Max 2 at the top of the panel there's a little about a centimeter wide where the light leaks and one thing you wouldn't haven't seen for sure when you look at an angle it's as if you see the panel like dipping uh, from inside I reached out to GPD they proposed to either send the screen or for me to send it to have it replaced as we mentioned um, Ultimately, I decided to service the device myself and I thought what an opportunity to do a teardown and do the, the process. They did send a video. Uh, I'm not sure who's doing the video, if it's Yang or somebody else, but um, that was super nice of them. So I have that to use as a blueprint, as a guideline, essentially. So we'll start with the NVMe and then we'll do the panel. So let's get started. First, we'll open up the GPD Win Max 2. So I'm not sure how many screws are here, but oh, I guess this one is too big. Now let's see if this does it. Yes, it does. Okay, let's go. Usually what I do is I take a piece of paper and I draw like a super quick shape of what I'm um, undoing in terms of screws. And I punch holes and I put the screws in the piece of paper. In the meantime, while this is happening, um, I don't know if I'm gonna have to remove the SSD and 4G door, most likely. We'll see. Yeah, that one is, like, I'm pretty sure it's undone, but it doesn't come out, it's okay. Whenever we flip it, we'll take it. These ones we're definitely gonna keep separate. I wanted to film in 60 FPS for the overhead camera, but I forgot. Oh well, some other time. All right, let's see what it looks like. Seems to open up now. I just, I'm not sure if there's a cable or something, so I don't want to pry it open like a madman, you know? You know what, let's get rid of those just to be sure. Okay, but I'm feeling a bit of resistance, so it might be behind the door. That wouldn't make sense actually, and I do have a drive in there, so that's a, 
nice little two terabyte. So there's no screws per se, but maybe the drive was holding it. That might actually be the case. I'm glad I looked just in case. Pretty sure there's no screws under there. I hope I'm not gonna have to undo them, but yeah, let's, oh, there it is. Okay, so there's gotta be a cable somewhere. There isn't? Oh, nice, okay. So I guess the buttons are just on the board itself. So let's just put this aside for now. So not much of a teardown because really I originally I wanted to open the entire device, but I've been waiting for my TPM 7950. You know, I was just pushing that video further and further away. So I thought, all right, I got to get it done. I'm going to have to open it again. I don't think I'm going to be making a video for when I changed uh, paste, but you know, if it's something you'd like to see, let me know in the comments box below, I guess. All right, so what we need to change is this right here. So I'm pretty sure, yeah, we're gonna have to remove at least the fan. I don't know that we're gonna have to remove the entire heat, heat sink, uh, the entire heat sink, I don't think so. But the fan is pretty much a guarantee. I'm sorry, my, my fat hands are in the way, right? Again, I'm trying to... Oh, that one is much longer. So that one will keep aside. So by the way, in case you guys want to see what this looks like, yeah. this is the device. And now we just removed these two screws. So let's see if the fan can be removed. It can definitely be pushed aside. We just want to be careful with the cable right here. I could disconnect it, but I don't think it's going to be necessary. Yeah, we just want to remove the little screw that's here. And that should be all we need to swap it. So we're going to do that real quick. I want to be careful with that cable right there. Can I just remove that? Is that tape? Like, what is this? There you go. Voila. This is better. Okay. Now that the fan is out of the way, let's just remove that. So, yeah, I don't know that I'm going to be able to do something with it. I'm probably going to end up putting it in... Uh, and a USB-C drive and use it as a thumbstick drive or whatever. So here we have our one terabyte. It's not uh, formatted, so I'm gonna have to do a fresh install of Windows. By the way, let me know if you guys would like to see a SteamOS install. Now, this is something I might be doing on that drive. I haven't decided yet. So I'm, <laughs> I'm having a bit of an issue. This screw, the standoff is too far with this drive okay so we have a bit of a weird situation there's this piece I don't know if uh, that usually was over the standoff for to hold the NVMe drive the screw that we have is too narrow so with this drive for some reason it doesn't seem to be all that much thicker than the Bywin but it's definitely not fitting so what I'm gonna do is I'll just use a little piece of um, electrical tape because I see that this little piece right there was also putting extra pressure on the battery connector. So we're just going to use a little bit of tape. going to be using my jerry rig knife here. I'm just going to cut a little piece. Make sure that I have a little extra something over the battery connector. There we have it. So I just, oops, put a little bit of extra tape right here because usually like we said, this little piece was putting pressure on it. So everything should fit as expected. All right, drive is holding in place. All that's left to do is for us to put back this little thing right here let's put it beneath that little kind of tape there we have it and i think i yeah i should be aligned so this is the longer one so we'll start with that one one thing i like to do to make sure i'm well my screw my screw is well positioned you go counterclockwise and you're going to hear one tick voila and then you know that you're perfectly aligned to screw. Now, I'm sorry again, my fat hands. Um, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to find a better way to do that um, in due time. 
Okay, so this is pretty much done. I'm gonna put that, we'll screw it after. You know, just to make sure that uh, everything is working. I'm gonna try to get in the BIOS, make sure the drive is seen. Yep, so there we have it. So, NVMe Sabrent Rocket. So that's fine. We got this done. Let's fire it off. And now for the next part, which is going to be the actual panel. But before we do that, let's put every screws back together. For as long as I can remember, I've always been someone who, I don't have a steady hand at all. So I usually use my second hand to kind of like stabilize myself. There you go, one click, voila. Now one thing that I used to hate and the funny thing is I was good in these things when I was a kid and I don't know how you call that in English, but whenever you have to do an exam where you talk in front of the whole class, man, I used to hate these ones because you know, you're stressed. So you start shaking even more. And I was already a shaky person to begin with. It was like, ugh, I hated it. Whenever you're screwing things, that's the thing I've learned from experience never tighten the screws too much like if you feel that you're in the standoff just you know you don't want to let it loose of course but you don't want to go too far in because you might you might damage either the screw or the standoff or the teeth for your screwdriver the part that is most difficult is soldering because i don't have a steady hand uh, but i do it still Sorry. Sorry for my fat head with a lot of hair in the way. So I want to make sure not to lose this. So I'm going to put this aside because we're not going to need it anymore. All right. So now the next part is the actual screen. In the video, they have a tool that I, I think I had at some point, but it's probably somewhere deep into my stuff so i figured i'm just gonna use this it should be enough i hope i'm not gonna regret doing the panel to be honest uh it should be enough because once you pull it open you just want to like use your nail or use one of those uh to get it through so yeah i might use the video here and there but for the most part i know what needs to happen and they also gave me that extra uh sort of super large ribbon or flexible board whatever you want to call it um, yeah. So in the video, it says to start here. So this is where we'll start. Now you want to apply a little bit of pressure so that it lifts the panel. Okay, so you see it's lifting up here. So I'm just using my nail to. There you have it. I'm use one of those. Originally, I was kind of tempted to use heat, but ultimately I decided against it. Do that in a second. All right, so let's just keep on prying this thing. And I, you know, I, I want to be careful because if for any reason this doesn't work the way that I hope for, I know that I have this one that works for sure. Alright, so I don't want to go too fast here. Especially since I'm not using a heat gun, so... This one... Oh. Okay, it seems to stay undone pretty well. The other thing I could have done is use this, but it's kind of going fine with this. Now, right about here, if I remember correctly, is where you have the thing. So I'm just going to lift this right here. Remove this, we don't need it anymore. 
And just so I can see a little better. Oops. I don't like the sound of that. Well, there's still a little bit of glue here, so I don't want to break it, so I'm just going to follow the same process. Actually, you know what? This is a perfect time for this right here. All right. Oh my God, are you serious? I've, wow. I've undone the panel from the backlight. This is what I did. This is the front panel, this is the back. Okay, so this is pretty much done. So I have one, <laughs> I have one chance at this. Better not mess up. Okay, so now the nice thing is they did provide me with another cable. So logically in the video, they reuse this one. Uh, I won't have to, so I'm just gonna be careful with everything. Let me position this so that you guys can see. So first we're gonna remove the tape here. I'm gonna lift that little ribbon cable. I can just do it with my nail like this, voila. And we remove, because that stays on the panel. And then, um, I believe this is it. So there we have it. So this is the panel that uh, has been removed. So here, we have this that goes like that. So yeah, let's start by uh, making sure that this is entered, so. All right, so you want to lift the black part from the cable here, so voila. And then from here, this will go in like this. This will go in there and we'll just put this here. So let's just remove the, the double face tape here. Voila. This is going right here. Lift this up, take this like so, this is fine. Now all the same, this one is a little flip. I might actually use this just to position properly, voila. You have the little things on the side to push it in, so I kind of like to use those for that. Now that it's pushed in, you pull this back. Well in place, there you go. And the only thing left to do is for us to plug this one. Actually, before we do that, let's just remove the excess of adhesive. You kinda don't need to be um, nice about this part you know you just have to get in there and get it off unfortunately for me pretty much the entire side of the panel left its adhesive that's why heating it up honestly uh, why am i looking at this camera heating it up might uh be a good thing ahead of time <laughs> Uh, believe me, there's many things that I opened that I babied a lot more than this device. Uh, it's really well made. It's sturdy. Like, you don't really have to be scared that you're breaking it or something like that. Yeah, that, that corner went really, really well. Oops. All right, that should do it. 
it's not perfect in terms of removing the adhesive, but it should good be it should be good enough. This goes like that, right here, my day. Right, now that this is inserted, I'm just gonna pull the little thing back. And now this goes like that. Now, usually what I want to do is pull the double face tape and stick it. But before I do that, I just want to make sure that the screen powers up. It does. Good. So this is looking like a successful installation, guys. Talking a little ahead of myself here, but... All right, so last but not least, there's this little white around it. That's the adhesive, so we're just gonna take this off. There we go. You know, now that I'm thinking, my, the, the panel I had before, it looked at the top, it looked like it was kind of sloping down so I wonder if the back panel was actually disconnected from the, the panel was actually disconnected from the backlight that could definitely be what caused my screen to look as if it was sloping down at the top and to look to actually cause that leak so f you know what now that I'm thinking about it for sure it's got to be what it was the fact that it was enclosed kind of kept it shut enough that it wasn't making it too bad but it had to be what it was, now that I think about it. All right, moment of truth. So let's just make sure that this is well aligned and boom, just apply nice pressure on the edges. Put my hand under because I don't want to bend anything. And at the top, of course. All right. Really? There you have it, guys. Oh, that panel actually has a little bit of a curve on the edges. I like that. But the, the previous one wasn't like that. And there you have it, guys. I'm, I'm really happy with how this turned out. I no longer have any issues. I can look at it from any angles. There really is no problems whatsoever with the panel um yeah looks nice looks beautiful looks amazing all right guys y'all have a good one thank you for watching peace